Good morning, I'm John Cox, and this is Synopsis, your first early morning briefing. It's Friday, February 12th, 2010. Here are today's top stories. High school football drama Friday Night Lights will end after its fifth season. The show just wrapped its fourth season on DirecTV and will premiere its fourth run on NBC April 30th. Bravo rolls out the new docuseries Double Exposure, centering on high-fashion celebrity photography team of Marcus Klinko and Idrani on April 5th at 10 p.m. ABC re-upped its summer reality series Shaq vs. for a second season, where Shaq tests his sports skills outside of sport of basketball. Ion Television made a handful of acquisition deals, including one with 20th Century involving the crime drama Shark and the reality series Texas Justice. Ion also picked up a 15-film package from Paramount Pictures Worldwide Television Distribution and acquired a 12-plus movie package from Warner Brothers Domestic Television Distribution. All titles will premiere on Ion Television during the next year. CBS cast Alex O'Loughlin in the pivotal role of Detective Steve McGarrett for its remake of Hawaii Five-0. This is the third series offer for O'Loughlin from CBS as he was previously cast in Moonlight and Three Rivers. TLC craves more sweet foods as the network begins production on a new series today in Washington, D.C. with the working title Cupcake Sisters. The series features a sister business duo of Sophie Lamontant and Catherine Kalinas, who co-own the successful Georgetown Cupcake. And finally today, HBO gave an official nod to the five-hour miniseries remake of classic film Mildred Pierce with Kate Winslet set to star, reports THR. Winslet will play the title role of Mildred Pierce Barragon, a proud single mother who tries to gain her daughter's love while building a lucrative business during the Great Depression in Los Angeles. Hi, I'm John Cox, and I just got in from shoveling two feet of snow, which is quite the coincidence because last Saturday, I also shoveled two feet of snow. Yay, winner! In the past, I've talked about Jay Leno and Mel Gibson, and between the two, Jay Leno had the much better week. Mr. Gibson appeared on Jimmy Kimmel, as he often does, this time equipped with a video pretending that he was Jimmy Kimmel. The video was not funny. In fact, it was awful. The only impression I was left with was that the video was made by an angry 14-year-old and not by Mel Gibson. On the other hand was Mr. Leno, who made fun of himself this week. His last two shows were filled of self-effacing humor, but the highlight was the Super Bowl commercial. Everyone I talked to and every article I read applauded the commercial and all those involved for participating. Some of the articles went on to say that Mr. Letterman made a huge mistake because the commercial went a long way in repairing Mr. Leno's reputation. Yet Mr. Letterman did it anyway. Why? because it was funny. And the more I think about it, the more I think that maybe Mr. Letterman had the best week of them all. Mr. Letterman has once again demonstrated that his first priority is not the sponsors of the ratings, but us, his audience. And that's why I will always be a David Letterman fan. I'm John Cox, and I'm wearing pajama pants. Thanks for watching. Well, that's it. Be sure to check your email for your full printed version of today's synopsis with new executive moves, more on ratings, loads of new classified ads, and a few other stories that didn't make it into this podcast, and of course, tonight's primetime broadcast lineup. This is a synopsis production in association with 311 West. For Cynthia Turner, who wrote and compiled synopsis, and for Trish Bahanik in Westchester, Pennsylvania, I'm John Cox. I'm going to have a good day. Even if I make it myself, I'm gonna have a good day. I don't need no one else. I'm gonna have a good day. Nothing wrong I could do. I'm gonna have a good day. Hope you have a good day too.